For today's video, I'm going to show you guys how to make this s'more using Adobe Project Neo, and I guarantee it's a lot easier than you think. Let's get into it. I'm here at the homepage of Adobe Project Neo, and what I want to do is I'm going to start by clicking the Create in the top right corner, and that's going to bring me into a blank canvas with just a platform and a cube. If you look in the top left, you'll see a default file name. I like to go ahead and change it so I can remember what I'm working on, but you're welcome to leave it if you want. First things first, let's get rid of show frame. I don't need to see the frame, but it is helpful if you want to know what your export is going to look like. And then I'm actually going to go ahead, I'm going to get rid of the cube too. Now, typically when I'm starting a new project, I'll also delete the floor too. But in this case, we're actually going to use this. So I'm going to select this and zoom in. And then I'm going to grab this little handle right here and pull it up. And that's going to increase the height of this platform. What I want to do next is I want to go to my properties panel on the right and you'll see appearance and material. I'm gonna change the color of this object to something like a orangish brown. And then if I go into that same properties panel on the right hand side, you'll see shape. And then I have a bottom corner and a top corner. So if I slide this to the right, what's gonna happen is it's gonna round my top corner. You should see that happening right there. Same thing happens with the bottom corner too. Now I wanna do something kind of stylistic. So I'm gonna change this to 40. And I'm gonna do the same thing to the bottom corner too. This is going to give me a nice little rounded look, and that's exactly what I'm looking for. If you haven't caught on yet, I'm actually building the top and bottom graham cracker of the s'more. So now I want to add some flair to it because I want it to actually look like a graham cracker. So we're going to add the little holes that you see inside of the graham cracker. So to do that, I'm going to grab my cylinder tool. I'm going to grab it. And then if I drag it on top of my shape, you'll see a little dot in the middle. And that just helps snap it right in the middle. It's a little big, so I'll make it a little smaller and I'm going to adjust it to where it's going inside of our little base. Now it's a little too tall as well, so I'll move it down. And here's where the magic's going to happen. On the right-hand panel, I can come over here to Combine, and I'm going to select Subtractive and Carve. So once I do that, you see it's actually carving out that shape. And then I actually want to blend it a little bit. That'll just make it a little smoother, because I don't want it to look so hard. And now I'm going to do the same thing with the bottom corner. Just give it a little bit of a roll. And if, if I zoom in a little bit, you can see it's nice and smooth. Now, this gray color is not working, right? It kind of looks like a cheese it right now. And that's not what the look I want. So I'm going to select it, and I'm going to change the color to like a darker orange. I can start by color selecting and then moving it down a little bit, maybe something like that. And so that's giving me the effect that I'm looking for. Now, you might be thinking, wow, you got to copy and paste this a billion times to get the pattern you want. And you could. You could do that, but you don't have to do that. And I'm going to show you a nice little hack. So if I come over here to repeat, I can select linear and then I can adjust all of these options right here to get the effect that I want. So I want to make sure the distance Y is all the way at zero and then I can adjust my distance X and my distance Z. So I'm going to do a couple more copies. I think I want to do maybe like a four by four and then let's increase all of this. And I don't have like anything specific that I'm wanting. I'm just kind of feeling this out as I go. So maybe something like that. I think that's looking pretty good. And say maybe I want to increase the size of the holes. I can easily do that just by selecting this. And then that kind of messes up my distance. So I can come back and I can adjust my distances. Yeah, I think that's good. I think I'm happy with that. So now I can take all of this and I can actually command G and that groups it for me. And then I can duplicate it. And I can throw this over here on the bottom. And you should start seeing what's happening, right? This will be the top and bottom of our s'more. So I'm going to hide this layer for now. So I can right click on my little panel right here. And then I can go to hide layer. So what's next on the s'more? Well, we need some chocolate, right? So we'll grab the cube. And again, I'm going to place it right in the middle. And again, these little handles right here allows me to change the height. And then I can adjust the length as well. Maybe adjust the width. We're just going to keep rocking with this until we get it perfect. Yeah, I think that's looking right. Might help if I actually start changing the color. So let's change it to like a chocolate brown, something like that, I think. Now I'm going to round the top corner again, just like we did with the graham cracker. So come over here, round that off. Now if something's a little off. I think it's because we're not getting any shininess out of this chocolate. So I'm going to come over here to my appearance and I'm going to drop the roughness all the way till I get it to where I think it looks good. And I like that shine right there. Maybe I'll increase the metallic a little bit, and I can add a reflectiveness to it as well. And that'll give us a nice little chocolate look. And I think I'm going to darken it up just a little bit, maybe something like that. And that's looking a lot more like chocolate, right? Now, what I could do is add more details, right? Because, like, if it was a real chocolate bar, it might have some more detail on top. So we might have, like, something coming out like this. And then we could duplicate it again. 
and then have this maybe be carved and that looks a little bit more like a chocolate bar but that's really not necessary because I'm you'll see I'm going to put the marshmallow on top but it took me two seconds to do it so might as well just keep it I'll take all this and I'm going to group it so now I have my chocolate bar and what's really nice is I can take both of these layers right here and I can come over here to my align tool and I can make sure that's perfectly aligned in the middle and then I can grab this again and I can put it somewhere like this because we definitely need to put two pieces of chocolate on this, right? I'm always rocking with two pieces of chocolate on my s'mores. And I'm going to group these. So now I can grab this, go back to my align tool, make sure it's nice in the middle. Perfect. And maybe say I'm not feeling like it's big enough. I can increase the size of this just ever so slightly. And now we've got this nice little uh, bed of chocolate on our s'more. All right, so this is all looking good. And don't forget, I've got this layer hidden right here. So I can show this layer, but I'm going to hide this again because it's kind of in the way. So now what we want to do is we're going to add the, in my opinion, the best part, the marshmallow. So I'm going to grab a sphere and I'm going to put it right in the middle again. So let me, let me just show that again from a better angle. I'm going to grab the sphere, pop it right in the middle. And we're going to make this way bigger. So maybe something like that, right? And so this is going to be the marshmallow. So I'm going to move this up and then I'm going to grab this little handle again and I'm going to smush it, right? because it's a marshmallow and we just squished it in between graham crackers. So I'm gonna make sure to squish it, maybe increase the size a little bit, move it up. And now this is where Neo really shines in my opinion. I haven't even done anything yet, but see how it's like morphing around the chocolate. It already kind of looks natural, like a marshmallow is being smushed and that's perfect. But what I'm gonna do to give it a little bit more flair is I'm gonna come down here to shape and you see this inflate slider right here? I can inflate it and that's gonna give me a much better look. All right, cool, I'm pretty happy with this effect so far. So I'm gonna leave this here and you'll see, I'm gonna add it, I'm gonna make it look a little bit more gooey too here in a minute, but right now I like this. So I like this color. I think I'm actually gonna add maybe like a little bit of orange to it. So I'm going to go up to white a lot. I'll, I'll make it a little bit orange in the bottom right hand slider and then I'll pull this up to the white side. So it kind of gives it this nice warm glow to it, maybe like we just roasted it. So that's a nice looking color right there. I like that. So finally, I can come back over here and turn on my layer so we can show the layer. And I can move this to make sure it looks nice in a good spot, like it's getting smushed. Perfect. Now it's a little too perfect, so I'm going to adjust the rotation. Maybe something like that. That gives it a little bit more of that natural feeling, right? I'm really liking this. What I want to do next is I'm going to change the background. So I think I want to do like a nice little light yellow, something like that. And up here in the top right, I can adjust the light so I can change the rotation. I can change the height and do the shadow distance. So I want some shadows, but I don't want to, I don't want it looking too crazy. Now I really like how this looks right here and you could definitely just export it and be done at this point. But I wanna add a little bit more flair and Neo has some really cool tools that allows me to do that. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna grab my sphere tool again and I'm just gonna place it on the side, just like this. And I'm gonna make sure to grab this color and I'm gonna change the color here because I want them to look consistent. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna zoom in just a little bit and I'm going to increase the blending. And what you see, is it's actually blending between the marshmallow. See that? Where else are you gonna do that? It's, it's one of the coolest features about Project Neo. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna increase this size quite a bit, and I'm actually gonna change this layer just to be right on top of the marshmallow because I don't want it blending with any of my other layers, just blending with the marshmallow. And now I'm gonna move this. I'm gonna put it right here. And look, it looks like my marshmallow is overflowing onto the graham cracker, which is so cool. So I'm gonna take this. I'm going to duplicate it. And again, you're going to have to change your layers each time. So make sure we're on the bottom layer. I'm going to bring this up and I want it to look like it's going on top of the graham cracker as well. So that's looking a little funky, right? That doesn't look natural. So let's bring it more in. So now I'm just going to take my time and I'm going to go through and I'm going to put this where it kind of feels right. There's no like rhyme or reason to this part right here. This is where you just need to be a, a creative and kind of go through with what your vision is super happy with this it made that marshmallow look super organic so if i just rotate around you can see i've got some things spilling out some things kind of going over the top and i could i could spend more time on this if i really wanted to but i'm pleased with how this looks so what i can do next is i can grab all of these layers and i can just group them again so now i've got one nice group of this s'more so some cool things you can actually do with this is i can come over here to styles 
And you see I have realistic, vector, pixelated, illustrated. Let's look at the vector art. And let's drop this stroke down to one. I really love the vector art feature. I think it looks really cool. And you can export this. So if I go to download, I can export this as an SVG and then open it in Adobe Illustrator and manipulate this. And then I could go to pixelated. So say I'm doing some type of video game and I want a s'more looking sprite. Super easy to do right here. And then there's the illustrative, which is really cool. This makes it look like kind of like a painting. And there's all different kinds of styles. There's different texture styles. You can change the size, all different kinds of things. But for now, I'm gonna put it back to realistic because that's what I had in mind. And some more cool things you can do with this. So if I come over here to download, I can do an MP4 video and then I can do a preview. So I can do a nice little turntable of this illustration that I made. Really fun. I probably had one of those at the beginning of this video. But what's really cool is there's a practical use for this. Like I can actually do real graphic design with this. So I can take this, I can duplicate it, and then I can just start moving it around the canvas and making a really cool composition that I can then export as a PNG and I can use for whatever. Now, before I get too carried away with this composition, I'm gonna save this snapshot. So I can click snapshot right here. So if I go ahead and move the camera, I can come back to my snapshot and it'll reset that view for me. So that's actually really helpful when I'm trying to make compositions because in 3D space, it's really easy to get lost. So now I can go to download, PNG, transparent background, and then we can download. So here's that file in Photoshop. So you can see I can zoom in. It's really good resolution. It's got all my shines. And I'm able to actually add a background in here. And I can do any type of photo manipulation that I want. Well, guys, that's all I got for you. If you like this video, you already know what to do. Until the next time, peace.